In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you some unreleased new features inside of Photoshop 2023 and how you can access them. So the first thing you want to do is open up the public beta version of Photoshop. And to do that, just go to Creative Cloud and then you'll see beta apps and you'll see these are the ones that are public betas. Just do Photoshop, download it and open it. So I'm going to show you an amazing way to simulate split neutral density filters and vignettes and stuff. But first, let's look at another feature. And this one here is the live Gaussian blur. It's really amazing. So it doesn't work on a smart object. So what we're going to do is we want to add some realistic kind of depth of field to this, but we just want to brush it on. In the past, this would have taken a lot of steps, but now it's super simple. We're just going to choose filter. And then we're going to go under the blur and then under blur, you'll see live Gaussian blur. Don't grab Gaussian blur, grab live Gaussian blur. And then we turn it on and then you'll see this little uh, window that you can move around. So this works very much like a blur. We could just decide how much of a blur we want. So let's take the blur to about there. Now it's affecting the entire photo, just like you would expect, but let's do something a little bit different. Now, I want to reduce just the amount of blur here across this strip, across this area here, but I don't want to go 100%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my opacity down. I'm going to take it down to about, say, 50% or there close enough. All right, so what we want to do is change the size of the brush, and we can just tap the right bracket key to make it bigger, left bracket key will make it smaller. You want it quite large, and you also want it soft. So if you choose the brush, you'll see hardness. Take it all the way down. Okay, so let's change this to the minus. And now we're going to reduce this by 48% and we're going to create a plane of focus behind our bird here. So let's just drag across and you'll notice now that it's kind of semi blurred. Now we want to make it very, very sharp up the front. So let's take the opacity all the way up to a hundred, hit the left bracket key. This make this brush a little bit smaller. And now we're going to drag across this area and notice as we do, this area becomes nice and sharp and in focus. Now I'm going to hit the left bracket key once again, and this time I'm just going to go really small and I just want to paint in these areas that I want to be very, very sharp. So this will be our foreground focus right here. All right. So if we look at this before, notice that the whole photo is sharp and then after we've added this kind of a blur. Now we can adjust it. This is a nice thing about this. I can increase the blur amount and make that effect more prominent, or I can reduce it. Okay, so that might be a little much, but we can also fade it. So if we take this opacity and we fade it, notice this can give us a little bit of a kind of a slide sandwich kind of a feel, almost like an Orton effect. Okay, and I'm just gonna click OK, and what this is gonna do is just gonna put it on a new layer. Let me show you another example of applying this, and then I wanna show you a really cool way of doing a vignette. So one way you could do this is we could just choose the filter blur, and let's do our live Gaussian blur and we're just going to apply this blur amount. So let's just apply it to the whole thing. Great. And now if I want to get rid of a bit of the blur, I can just choose a nice large brush and notice I've got the opacity turned down a little bit and you could literally just use this for just kind of painting in certain areas. See that? And now you could start to just kind of apply your own kind of blur effect to this photo. So it's, it's a very useful tool. Okay, so let's back up. So now what I want to show you is an easy way to create a vignette. So another new feature in here is the live gradient. So this live gradient is super powerful, but I'm first of all going to show you how to use it practically, and then I'll show you the settings. So let's go to the gradient. And generally speaking, if I wanted to add a vignette with a gradient, I would have to kind of plan it out beforehand because once you apply it, you're stuck with it. But not in this case with the live gradient is very different. So I want to choose the gradient. And if you want the classic, that's the original, but we're going to be using the live gradient. We're going to go foreground to transparent. Notice the foreground set to black. And I'm going to use gradient, a radial gradient rather than a linear. And if I click and drag out here, notice now we see this kind of appears so I can apply this. And so the nice thing about this, you know, is I can adjust the opacity so I can see, Hey, how much vignette do I want? Let's keep it really high. But once we've applied it, we can always come back at any time. We can change the size of this, but we can move it. We can reposition it by grabbing the center. 
and we can scale it. Now, if I click away and I go on to a different layer, when I go back, that live gradient's always there. It's really cool. All right, so let me show you a little bit more with this live gradient. We're gonna choose the gradient. We're gonna choose the foreground to transparent. And if we wanna just kind of drag it down here, let's do a linear. You could use this as a split neutral density effect. Look at this into the sky. So we can go there, drop the opacity down a little bit. Just wanna kind of darken it, maybe put it into multiply mode. And of course, you know, if you wanted to add a little bit of color to that, we could just double click. Maybe you wanna make it a little bit of a bluish kind of a tone. Notice that we can just go in there and we can choose those colors. See that? So you put a little bit of blue into that sky, we can. And let's just apply, you know, something like say a red. I just wanna show you how this works because there's a lot of useful features in here. Let's just hide, just select there with the eyedropper. All right, so this is gonna give us some color. We're gonna do a linear gradient. And I'm just gonna drag it up and down. Okay, so as we can see, there's our gradient. Now, if we choose this midpoint, notice how we can move it. And that's just essentially how it blends between the two colors. If it goes in the middle, it's an even blend. As it goes towards the top here or the yellow, that means so this is gonna be the midpoint of the blend. So we can change that wherever we want. Now, the nice thing about this is if we wanna add another color in here, we can just go the area we want to do it. See the little plus, just tap. And right now that shows a red. I can double click that red and I could change it to something like a white. Now this will show you the midpoints. Now you can see how we can pull these midpoints up or down to make this blend more gradual or more abrupt. Let's add another color here. Why don't we add something like a, a purplish kind of a hue. And notice as we select these different areas, you're going to see we can adjust those midpoints between each one of those gradients. Look at that. Now, the nice thing is we can make this gradient more abrupt. We can just drag it down. We can increase the size of it. We can change the angle. You know, we just have so much control over this gradient. And if you want to get rid of one of the colors, say this white, you just select it and just hit the delete key. Now, if we are applying a gradient, it'll work the same way. So let me just throw this out and let's just apply a gradient. So we're going to go under maybe the basics here or let's scroll down, grab one of these and we just drag it out over the image. And then we get this tool that we can use to modify our gradient at any time. We can also change the color here. And at any time you can change the type of gradient. You want to prefer a radial gradient, no problem. Now, if you want to go the other way, just hit reverse. We can go through all the different types of gradients. Here's a mirror gradient. And this is literally just going to mirror what we've got there. Now, of course, we've got a diamond gradient. So I'm curious what you think of these two new features. Let me know in the comments underneath. And if you're new, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications. You won't miss any of my tutorials. And if you like this, smash the like button into dust. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.